I mean, here in Washington, two blocks or so from where I sit now, out front of the White House, it was a huge crowd and a loud and an angry one. And I say huge uh, with that being in context of this isn't something that was planned for weeks or even days. It sprung up just since Trump signed the executive order. And look, I was just out in that crowd and talked to people who say this is, you know, sad and wrong and sends the wrong signal about what this country is meant to stand for. The chanting here in D.C. and in the other demonstrations across the country. Today, Boston, for example, we had another very large crowd. The chants in D.C. were our house, not your house, meaning the White House. And to Trump himself, the message, you know, please rethink this. It's wrongheaded and ugly and unnecessary and hurtful, and it plays to the hands of the very people Trump is targeting, terrorists who might use this to inspire more to join their cause. Everyone we spoke with had that message. Is he listening? They're not convinced. Will such protests fade away? They insist. Not a chance. We mentioned Boston. Uh, let's give a listen to some of what was said to the crowd uh, just this afternoon in Boston. And we will continue to resist because we all know too well that a five-year-old Iraqi child Fleeing violence is, and war is not a threat to our security. A Somali father of three working two jobs to support his family is not a security threat. A single Yemeni mother is not a security threat. And a biology student from Sudan is not our, a threat to our security. So that happening in Boston, of course, we saw what was happening in Washington around you earlier today. We were showing our audience the protests taking place at Dallas-Fort Worth. And the backdrop against all this, though, is the fact the White House is defending this executive order, trying to clear up what all this means. Is that succeeding? Uh, well, time will tell. <laughs> um, but I guess there are two parts to that answer. Uh, one, the White House says... It's not a Muslim ban, and the evidence on that is that it's not a ban on immigration from all Muslim countries, just those identified as countries that harbor and train terrorists. Uh, and, says the White House, it's only affecting a very tiny number of travelers relative to the total number of people who come into this country every day. So the White House frames it as an inconvenience. You get pulled aside and asked a few questions, and a determination is made. And, says the White House, it makes America safer. So deal with it. Now, you can think what you might about the White House defense, but the second part of the answer is not really up for dispute, and that is, like it or not, this is exactly what Donald Trump said he would do when he was campaigning if he were to be elected president. And he was elected. Yes, Hillary Clinton got more votes nationwide, but the fact is, by winning the states he won, Donald Trump won the election and is doing what he promised he'd do. Full stop. He was given a mandate by this country, and he's carrying it out. Does that mean people aren't angry? No. Does it mean they won't or shouldn't protest? No. But none of this should come as a surprise to those who voted or, for that matter, those who didn't vote in November. He made his intentions loud and clear.